Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, I'm sitting in my favorite Tim Hortons, sipping on a double-double, when bam, my phone explodes with notifications. The headline, Meghan Screams in Humiliation. Furious Canada blacklists evil Meghan Markle from Invictus Games 2025. I nearly choked on my Timbit. Just when you thought the Sussex saga couldn't get any wilder, Canada said, hold my poteen. Now let me tell you, I've been following this royal drama since Harry was just a ginger-haired army lad with a dream. The Invictus Games, that was his baby, his pride and joy. It was like watching a proud papa show off his newborn to the world. But oh boy, how times have changed. It's gone from a heartwarming story of triumph over adversity to a soap opera that would make even the writers of Days of Our Lives blush. So apparently, Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, or is it just Mrs. Mountbatten Windsor now? I can't keep up, is planning to make a grand entrance at the 2025 Invictus Games in Vancouver. But hold on to your hockey jerseys, folks, because Canada is not having it. They've basically told Harry, bro, it's you or her. Choose wisely. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for supporting our veterans and celebrating their resilience. Heck, if I could do a cartwheel without throwing out my back, I'd be out there competing myself. But there's a fine line between supporting a cause and turning it into your personal PR machine and it looks like Meghan might have pole vaulted right over that line. Let's break it down, shall we? The Invictus Games used to be this beautiful, inspiring event. You had Prince Charles, King Charles now, my bad, and Prince William cheering from the sidelines. You had Kate Middleton, sorry, Catherine, Princess of Wales. These title changes are giving me whiplash, helping Harry bring his vision to life. It was like a royal family group hug, but with more medals and less awkward small talk. But now, oh boy, now we've got Netflix documentaries that are about as popular as a snowstorm in July. We've got more drama than a high school theater production. And at the center of it all, Meghan Markle, the woman who went from suits to the royal suite and decided neither quite fit her ambitions. And can we talk about these demands? Private jet, luxury digs, security detail, limo service, media team, and a donation to their foundation. I mean, come on. It's like she's planning a steak visit, not attending a sporting event. Did she think she was going to the Met Gala, not the Invictus Games? I've seen divas make fewer demands at the Grammys. But here's the kicker. Canada, our friendly neighbor to the north, land of politeness and apologies, has basically told Meghan to take off. A. They've said thanks, but no thanks to her laundry list of demands faster than you can say maple leaf. And you know what? Good for them. It's about time someone stood up and said, hey, this isn't the Meghan Markle show. And let's not forget the public reaction. Oh boy, Canadians are not happy. They're madder than a moose with a stubbed hoof. You've got Vancouver residents saying they won't support the games if it turns into the Meghan Markle show. You've got folks from Vancouver Island. You know, where Harry and Meghan lived during their great escape from royal life. Saying they wouldn't attend if the couple shows up. It's like they're the most unpopular kids at the high school reunion. But you know what really gets me? The sheer audacity of it all. Here's Meghan, who married into one of the most privileged families in the world, who got a crash course in royal protocol and public service, and she's acting like she's still the star of a cable TV drama. It's like she forgot that the Invictus Games are about the athletes, not about her wardrobe choices or her next photo op. And poor Harry. The guy started this whole thing with the best intentions. He wanted to help his fellow veterans, to give them a platform to show their strength and resilience. And now, now he's caught between a rock and a hard place, or should I say, between his wife and his homeland. Talk about being stuck between a crown and a hard place. But here's the thing that really tickles me. 
The reaction on social media. Oh boy, Twitter is having a field day with this. The memes, the hot takes, the armchair diplomats coming out of the woodwork. It's a virtual feeding frenzy. I've seen hashtags trending that are so savage, they make Canadian geese look friendly. You've got Team Sussex defenders out there, arguing that Megan's just trying to support her husband, that she's being unfairly targeted, that it's all a big misunderstanding. And look, I get it. Being in the public eye isn't easy. But there's a difference between supporting your spouse and hijacking an entire event for your own PR purposes. Then you've got the other side, the critics who are having an absolute field day with this. They're calling Harry and Meghan opportunists, saying they're nothing but fame-hungry celebs trying to cash in on the goodwill of veterans. Some folks are even calling for them to be permanently banned from Canada. It's like a never-ending game of North American hot potato. And you know what? Both sides have a point. It's a classic case of damned if you do, damned if you don't. But when you've got an entire country telling you to stay home, maybe it's time to take a good hard look in the mirror and ask yourself if you're really doing this for the right reasons. But here's the real kicker. What does this mean for the future of the Invictus Games? I mean, Harry and Meghan aren't just any celebrity couple. They're ex-royals with a global platform. When they speak, people listen. For better or for worse. And that kind of influence. It's a double-edged sword, my friends. On one hand, their involvement could bring more attention to the games, more funding, more support for veterans. And that's a good thing, right? These athletes deserve all the recognition and support they can get. But on the other hand, with great power comes great responsibility. Yes, I'm quoting Spider-Man again. Sue me. The minute the Invictus Games become more about the Sussex drama than about the athletes, we've lost the plot. It's like throwing a birthday party for your kid and then making it all about you. And let's not forget the potential fallout from all this. If Harry and Meghan's involvement continues to be this controversial, how long before sponsors start pulling out? How long before other countries start questioning whether they want to host the Games? It's like they've lit a fuse on a maple syrup-covered powder keg. But you know what really gets me about all this? The fact that we're all so obsessed with it. I mean, think about it. We've got climate change turning our planet into a sauna. We've got economic crisis making people choose between heating and eating. We've got global conflicts that make the War of 1812 look like a friendly hockey game. And yet here we are, glued to our screens, eagerly lapping up every morsel of this royal drama. It's like we're all extras in some bizarre reality show called Keeping Up with the Windsors. Canuck Edition. But maybe that's the point. Maybe in a world that often feels like it's spinning out of control, there's something comforting about immersing ourselves in celebrity drama. It's like, sure, my rent's gone up and I can't afford gas, but at least I'm not banned from an entire country. Or maybe it's just that we're hardwired to care about this stuff. Humans have been gossiping about the rich and powerful since we first crawled out of the primordial loose. This is just the 21 saint century version of gathering around the igloo to chat about what scandalous things the local chieftain has been up to. But you know what? As much as I snark about all this, I can't help but feel a twinge of sympathy for Harry and Meghan. I mean, imagine having your every move scrutinized by millions of people. Imagine trying to do some good in the world, only to have it backfire spectacularly. Imagine being caught between two worlds, not quite royal, not quite celebrity, not quite sure where you fit in. Don't get me wrong. They've made their fair share of missteps. This whole Invictus Games debacle. Yikes. The Netflix documentary. Double yikes. But at the end of the day, they're just two people trying to figure out their place in the world. It's just that their world happens to be a global stage with billions of people watching. So where do we go from here? Well, if I were a betting man, which I'm not, because let's face it, I can barely afford my Netflix subscription. I'd say this isn't the last we've heard of this saga. There will be more statements, more interviews, more drama. The media will continue to feast on every morsel of controversy. 
Twitter will continue to be a battlefield of hot takes and savage memes. But maybe just maybe, we could all take a step back and remember what the Invictus games are really about. They're about celebrating the indomitable human spirit. They're about honoring the sacrifices of our veterans. They're about inspiring people to overcome adversity and achieve greatness. Or, you know, we could just keep obsessing over royal drama. Because let's face it, that's probably what we're going to do anyway. After all, why focus on inspiring stories of triumph when we can argue about celebrities on the internet? So there you have it, folks. The latest chapter in the saga of Harry and Meghan versus the Great White North. Will they show up at the Invictus Games? Will Canada stick to its guns? Will we ever get tired of talking about them? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, it's never a dull moment in the world of the X-Royals. So buckle up, grab your popcorn, and get ready for the next installment of As the Maple Leaf Burns. Because if there's one thing we can count on, it's that there's always more drama just around the corner. Stay tuned, folks. Something tells me this royal drama is just getting started. And who knows, maybe by this time next year, we'll all be pledging allegiance to King Harry Hewitt I. Stranger things have happened, like finding out your dad isn't your dad after 37 years. Until then, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.